say we met what about four years ago in prison yeah because i've been out two you've been out three and it was before lockdown so yeah we say about four years ago um obviously i knew a little bit about your story i didn't know as in depth of obviously what i know now um the person that you was in a relationship with at the time before you went to prison i know them as tj i knew them as a woman transgender trans just oh my god i can't say the word transitioning into a male which is cool that's fine you know um but i only knew him as a him in a women's prison i knew him as tj i didn't know any other name i do remember one scenario though i was in bronzeville and this was before we met and he we was walking on a visit because he's one of the first people that i started speaking to in prison he seemed sound he was funny had a laugh with him you know um and yeah we was going on a visit together and someone was coming through and you know, as you come off the visit and you've got the hallway and you, then you get locked in the other bit to get yeah. search coming out. So one lot was coming off as we were going on and someone's screaming at him like, ah, oh, you're a you're a rapist, you're this, you're that, you know, like really attacking him. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? Like, and, um, and then when that door got shut between this person screaming at him, he then started to come at yeah, like da da da, coming all like boisterous at the glass. Yeah. So straight away, I thought that's a bit strange because you didn't say anything whilst they were like trying to come it's at right. you. Yeah. yeah. Um. And then obviously nothing got said because we went on the visit, and I'm pretty sure it got extended, um, their visit and whatever. Anyway, so that was that. I never really brought it up to him. That was the end of that story. Mm. Baby. Is that your door? Mommy. Yeah, I don't know. Two seconds, let me go and get this door. Hold on. No Why? Do you need to go? Do you need to? Do you need to go? Do you want to do? Oh, another... it's fine. Carry on. All right. So we'll just leave a little gap no, for a minute. It's... No, I'm all right. Okay, I'll leave a little gap and I'll have to just cut this bit out. Um, yeah. So yeah, so that was really that. So that was that's all the sort of like you know that was it. It was forgotten about. We never spoke about it again, and then. Um, basically then obviously i come to send we met i heard a little bit about your story so do you want to start off by sort of explaining how you and tj met and how you what you know who you thought tj was prior to coming to prison yes yeah, so i met tj maybe i went down 2016 so yeah like two and a half years before that maybe three so I met TJ online dating on Pit and Fish, but it was my mum's best friend that introduced me to it. So I started talking to him as a him. Um, they portrayed themselves as a man, never said they were transgender, never said they were transitioning, betrayed themselves to have two kids, and betrayed themselves to be half Turkish, half Jamaican. So that's the person that I thought I was meeting. Obviously, you're talking. I thought they were like what they said they were. I believed everything they said because anyone that knows this person or has met this person, unless you met them in a female jail, you would not know it's a female. Mm -hmm. So obviously met them, started talking to them. Um, I worked in North London at the time. So I agreed to meet them on the way back from work go for a drink, go for something to eat, like you normally do. So I started to meet them, um, started talking to them more and more. And um, I can't remember how long, but yeah, so I met them, started dating, meeting up, getting to know each other. Um, they never once said to me, like, 
anything. Never mentioned transgender to me. Um, they never said anything. Belong this time or the time that we done what we like in between the time that we we're dating when we first met and to the day that we first had intercourse. The person never like got naked. We never touched each other's bodies. It was although like the person always had an excuse from that part of touching. And I think she had she had a leg injury. So she was on crutches. She was a bit a bit crippled. So um yeah, so from there I didn't think nothing of it because you wouldn't if you met Hannah on the streets. No one would question it. So was it like, so obviously like, was it just sort of excuse after excuse with the like, you know, do you think the le- the, the leg was a fake thing? Because obviously like for me, you know, if I've met someone, I'm dating them, you know, I'm, you know, and there's a chemistry there. You, you want to, you know, you want things to happen, you know, you want to yeah. be able to, to touch your partner in a certain type of way, you know? Yeah, like, um, the leg injury is true. She did get attacked. She has got bolts and metals in her leg. That That's probably the only truthful thing she ever told me. That mm. no date of birth. So I know she's not lying about her age. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so from there, um, the first time, like, things happened... I was very intoxicated. Oh, and the answer to that, like, when I mean she let you touch her, like, it's like all the moment you got to, like, that body part was, like, off. What was the excuse, though? What For what reason? Like, like, I never knew nothing about transgenders. So I didn't realise transgenders can get binders. So she had a binder on. uh Uh-huh. Yeah, because anyone that knows her in jail is like, how did you hide them? But, yeah, she always wore a binder. Yeah. Like, a really, really tight vest binder. But how I got to finding that is another question. But, um, yeah, so you wouldn't know. Like, I don't know how, like, the position is there, but you just wouldn't know. So, from there, obviously the first time that it did happen... A, it was dark. B, the excuse for clothing was they were cold, even though it was, like, July, I think. June. Yeah, it was like, they were cold. Um, So that's why you couldn't do that. Like, everything was, like, off-bounds, apart from the basic intercourse. <laughs> I don't know what way to explain it politely. But, yeah. So... so you- Go on, sorry. Yeah, so when that happened, it's all though like it was done and dusted. Like, I can't, you know, this is like a blip. Like, it weren't normal. I knew in my head it didn't feel normal. But like, I was just like, okay, maybe the person's a bit insecure because obviously they've been in the hospital for a year. Like, maybe she. He was body conscious. I don't know. Like, you know, like, you think them things, but you just think, oh, yeah, I'm being stupid where I'm drunk. So literally, a couple of days after that situation, um, yeah, she ended up, like, hitting me. So from there, the relationship was just kind of like, that was the way it was, you know? Like, so just before you go any further, do you think you was a bit naive? Because I guess anyone watching this would be like, "What? How did you not like? How do you not like find it weird that you can't touch a partner? How do you like? How do you not end up getting frustrated? Do you feel like you was already in too deep? Had you fallen in love with TJ at this point? Like, so you know, people do. People get sucked in by people's lies, and yeah, and then they're already in. But they, once you've caught feelings. You know, people yeah, can go, oh, I'm... she's lying. Well, there's people out there that stay with people that beat the crap out of them because they're in too deep with their feelings. So, you know, this is... I'm just clearing up what 
I would think if I didn't know you, I'm clearing up what other people are probably thinking. Like, you know, they're probably going, oh, she's talking rubbish. How, how did you not know? How did you not ever want to touch your partner there? Like, you know, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I think in the in the space of the month we met and when it happened, it wasn't long at all. Yeah. So it was long enough that it's like, okay, but, you know, back then, A, I was much younger, B, you know, transgender wasn't a thing, like... Yeah, of course, you wouldn't have known. If you've slept together, you're not going to want for a minute think, oh, this is weird because it didn't feel like someone else I've been with because I think they're attracted. That's going to be yeah. not yeah. into your head. I totally understand that. Um, that, you know, that totally makes sense. It's just I the whole build up of... as to not yeah. touching like why. Yeah. It's, it's, it's weird. It's that like... You would be in a relationship with someone for a month, yeah. two months and not even be able to touch someone. Cause there's a couple of places that obviously you can't because you'd find out. Yeah. That that on truly, and on top of that, like she never got naked in front of me. Like, you know, it was like I used to say to her, like, why can't I have a shower with you? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? But it was like always an excuse of of why. Yeah, and at the point that she started hitting me, I didn't really want to ask questions. Mm-hmm. Then it comes to the point where everyone's gonna be like, okay, cool. So, um, one night we ended up meeting in Shoreditch and we was having cocktails outside. And I don't know how the conversation came about, but anyway, the conversation came up and she was like, uh, um, I don't know, how, I can't remember even what she said, but it came to the point of like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going through the process of transitioning from male to female. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, what? And she's like, oh, yeah, this bit never came up. Then she said something about she feels like or was born. I can't remember if she said she was born with both. Okay. Yeah, if she was a maphrodite or she feels like she's in the wrong trap of body. But anyway, she come up with this massive storyline of why she was going through this process. So I'm guessing at that point it would make sense as to why you wasn't allowed to touch her, yeah. why you was so all of it, everything yeah. now. In even though you didn't maybe agree with it, you you've got clarity in your head at this point. Yeah, right? is that right? Okay. Yeah. So I was kind of like, well, like, why wouldn't you be honest at the start? Like, why wouldn't you tell me this from the beginning? Like, why would you bring me along this process to now tell me this six, seven weeks in? Like. Why now? And it was all over like, oh well, you don't understand. Well, no, I don't understand. One, I'm, I've never been gay, and two, I'm, I, I've never felt like I'm in the wrong body. So why would I have these thoughts? Like, just never thought of like, well, any situation really. So I was like, okay, shit. Well, I even get on the bus now and run, but all my work stuff's at her house, so I need to go there to get them. And B, like, how do I cut this off? How do I go to the point of saying, like, I don't want to be with you or I don't want to support you because you're transitioning? At a time where I never had <clears throat> friends in this situation. I never had friends that have ever been in this situation. So, like, I end up babysitting my mom's friend and telling her, and then she ends up on the phone to TJ saying like don't you think it's unfair that you're putting her through this that and the other rah rah and then she says like about I think you're lying well from there let me tell you that was the worst conversation to this day that I could ever like hold of where everything got worse it was like from that day she turned into like the most evilest horror movie (laughs) murderer you could ever think of it's not funny, but, like, if you could just think if this was a movie, like, this would be the bit where, like, that music's coming in. Yeah. So, then it came to the day of, oh, I'm going for the operation. And I'm like, why can't I come? Why would you be home the same day? Like, why can't I support you? Why can't I go through this operation with you? Yeah. Why are you keeping it a secret for me? And it was 
although like the manipulation of like all the reasons why it's not about me, it's about them, rah 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 coming to it. So I was like, cool, like whatever. Then it came to the day that I was allowed to go see her after work. This is when she had the binder on. And I'm like, why have you got boxes on if you want to be a female? But I don't get it. I regret it. Well, how do you regret it? You must have had therapy and all of this for this. So how do you wake up and how are you home? Like, I'm thinking, how does this make sense? But obviously, there was nothing ever on TV about this. And I remember... At the same time this is happening, the storyline's coming into Hollyoaks. The first time anyone ever spoke about transgender on TV, it was Hollyoaks. And I remember the storylines coming. And as I'm learning more and more and more about this, I'm thinking, something came right. Like, that's major surgery. How are you home, like, the same day? Because apparently you had them both done on the same day. So, like, you know, looking back on it now, it was like, what was I thinking? But yeah. back then, I'm too scared to run. Like, I'm trying to think of, like, all the best ways to get out of this situation. <laughs> At that time, I mean, I never knew nothing about mental health, PTSD. I never knew nothing about autism. Like, I didn't know any of these things. I'm just thinking I'm, I'm a kid that, you know been through shit and I'm just a bit wild like not for a minute did I think I can't get myself out of this situation but at that point I couldn't get myself out of that situation you're not the only person though there's so many people out there you know it takes quite a lot to sit here and tell your story because you know from an outsider if I didn't know you I could just go this girl's a mug you're a mug. Yeah. Like, you are chatting absolute rubbish. How did you not know? Da, 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 da. But when yeah. you actually know somebody and then you take a step back, and I think prison opened our eyes up to so much mental health. Transgenders, I didn't really know no. too deep, you know? And I love it. I've got so much respect for the for the yeah. ones that are real and they do it. Yeah. Like Orin. I so much yeah. love and respect for them, but I don't like it when it's false and it's, you know, and then obviously your situation... But I won't go in too much into that anyway because it's not about hate or anything like that. No. But, you know, as an outsider, this is why I'm trying to get, get as many questions in in the nicest way possible because I would think you're an absolute idiot. If I was sat yes. now watching this on my YouTube channel and I'd be like, this girl is talking yes. absolute rubbish. But it's the same as a woman being beaten in a relationship. You know, once they're in and they think they can't leave, and that's what narcissistic people do, you know. They trap you in and they find it, you know, you find it so hard to, you just think that this is it. This is my life and this is the all I know, especially when you're young as well. Like, so obviously, sorry, I was cutting you off a little bit there. So obviously, so at this point now, you, you, you've you cottoned on, you know, had you guys committed your crime together at this point? No, so at uh, this point, I'm questioning it, but by then, obviously... I'm saying obviously because I'm like, you kind of know, but I'm forgetting. <laughs> but back this point, um, she broke my nose. It was like daily torture. I wasn't allowed to eat. And then she said I was allowed to eat. I wasn't allowed to yeah, wear anything that she didn't agree to. I wasn't allowed to go outside unless she agreed to. Like, everything from me waking up to the minute going to bed was a control. And anyone that knows me is like, would honestly be like, how did you of all people get this situation? How did you get into this situation and not be able to get out of it? But I think what people forget is that, you know, all of a sudden people think, oh, but it's not a man. Or, you know, she's like the same height as you. Or... But you've already caught feelings at this point. But so think... even though you know you're being beaten and it's not okay, you're in love at this point. So, you know, we've all, like most people have been there, done it, you know, been with someone they probably shouldn't have done and stuff like that. But once you're into a point, obviously, if the abuse didn't come out 
to after you've caught feelings, you know, it, it, it just becomes a different ball game. I think by September, it wasn't even like about love. I think by the time it was my birthday, she broke my nose. It wasn't even love. It was pure fear. Like, so did you not? Um, sorry, did you not like? Did you not feel like you could tell your family or friends? Did they know what was going on? Like, family knew. You know, my going to the police. Mom, uh, my mum was reporting me missing weekly. Um, the police would come, talk, leave, leave me sitting in a black blue, would offer me an ambulance service, and that's it. Like, I remember, like, escaping out of a window after she smashed my head and I was bleeding everywhere. And two old couples, two doors down, had, had me locked in their house and called the police. And, I mean, I'm literally telling the police, like, this person's holding me hostage. She's got my passport. She's got my bank card. Look at the state of me. Like, help me, please. I'm scared. Like, I need help. Help me. She convinced them that I was schizophrenic. Wow. And the thing is, everyone was saying, like, no, the police can't. Well, let me tell you, it came up in my court case and they investigated the police officers at the time because it was caught on camera. I was going to say, sh- what, did this all come up in court? But we can jump yeah. onto that as we get down to that bit. Like, there were plenty of times the police would leave me there, like, loads of times. The ambulance service tried to help. They would put, like... There was even things of like they would they would say that no one's allowed to come visit me when I was in hospital for the night because they knew that she was getting in there. Royal London knew the situation. I mean, after my nose got broke, she made me push her home in a wheelchair. I'm still got anaesthetic in my body. Um, there was like no this girl like even got her own dad sectioned so she could have full control of his money. And I remember um, the day my crime happened and I got arrested. And the day in question, I took, like, two boxes, like, a box or two boxes of my medication. I'm tripling. So I was trying to kill myself on the day. And she dragged me in the car, put me in the car. I remember I got arrested... Um, in an interview, they kept on asking me about, ah, oh, who's, who's Hannah? And I'm like, they're like, I'm like, they're asking me about Hannah. And I'm like, who's Hannah? Like, who the fuck is Hannah? Yeah. Like, who is Hannah? And they're looking at me like, this girl is trying to convince us she don't know who she's with. And I'm like, who's Hannah though? Like, who's Hannah? And they're like, the person you came in with. I was like, no, that's TJ. That's not Hannah. Like, that's Tarjan. That's Tarjan. And I'm like, literally, like, in an interview saying, like, I don't have a fucking clue who you're chatting about. And obviously, as we all know, I ended up in prison. So clearly I wasn't believed. <laughs> but that's like, the day I got out, people think, okay, your code is, they're going to put a restriction. There was no restriction on us talking. <laughs> Like, we were allowed to still live together, everything. So, okay, oh, I'm going to hold you right there because I now you've probably... I'm even in suspense a little bit because I, I know you've told me, but I can't remember. So, at this point in the police station, guys, you found out that, that TJ is not TJ. TJ is Hannah. So, at this point, has the penny dropped? Your gut yeah. feeling was right after this so-called op. She is a female. She was always a female. Yes. So, what yeah. happened then? <laughs> Did you question her? Um, so we got released and I questioned her. She was like, oh, I told you I've been to jail before. I was like, yeah, but how uh, How did you go to Holloway as, as a female when you was a man? She was like, because I'm transitioning. I'm like, yeah, but you couldn't have gone to like a female's estate with still having like, you know, no female ho- like hormones. Like, that's impossible. Like, da 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 da. And she just went absolutely bonkers, like... But obviously, absolutely. just quickly, obviously, as we now know, we've both been to prison, you can be a male wanting to be a female and going into a women's yeah. prison. So, yeah. obviously, yeah, but she but was... I'm... 
you weren't even living. Like, I'm trying to work it all out. And obviously, she's saying all these things. I'm like, okay, it must be true. Like, I've never... I've got family members, but obviously, I didn't talk to them to ask them if it's true. I never... Anyone that I know, like, were just like, well, maybe, like, you know, my friends asked their friends, and they were like, yeah, there is transgenders in jail. And I'm like, okay, maybe she is telling the truth. So... As time goes on, I'm finding these prison letters from the other victims saying, like, how can you lie to me? Why are you Hannah and you're in a female? And I'm thinking, I'm asking you the same questions. Like, how? What? And then it comes to the point that everyone's going to be like, oh, my God. So it's not even funny, but it's like, oh, that couldn't have happened. So on this night, um, I can't remember what kicked the crazy bitch off. <laughs> but anyway, she kicked off. And um, it got to the point where she said, if we're going to die, we're going to die together. Nice. And I was like, okay, what do you mean we're going to die together? No, I didn't want to believe it was true. No, I'm not even going to lie. I actually did not want to believe. No, I did believe it was true. And I questioned her that it was true. But it was all though. But you would rather just tell yourself it wasn't true because you didn't want it to be true. No. Is that what you... Was at that point, it was like, you've beaten me. I'm going to make you admit the truth. Like. I turned into a bit like an FBI agent. <laughs> it's sort of like I basically done most of the police work anyway. But it was like I had to get like I had to get to the end of this. Like I had to stop you. So if I have to take the beatings, I'm gonna take the beatings, but I'm gonna get everything I need. And on top of that, the girl knows I'm shitting myself. I've never been to jail. She's got me, she's got the balls by the handle. She said she was going to go there and tell them it was all my plan. Who are they going to believe at the end of the day? The victim that was meant to be the victim that night was was the rapist of when I was 16. Oh, okay. Like, I'm just like, what the fuck is going to happen? So, that night, um, yeah, she set the bag in the front room on fire with all my stuff in it. So I put the fire out and then she's trying to set one off in the bedroom as well. Jesus. As I come into the bedroom now, the girls had me up by my neck. She sprayed me with lighter fluid all over me, like beating me, choking me. I think I blacked out at one point. I come back round and I'm screaming at her like, let me shower. It's stinging, it's stinging, it's hurting. So she agreed to let me have a shower. As I'm in the shower, she come in and just ducked me one in the side of my head and dragged me about my head and was like you dumb bitch I was born a female you fucking dumb bitch and I was like I know it like that night ended up with me being ducked like end of like I think no that night I passed out and I woke up on the bed and I was dressed Like, I don't know how I got from the floor to the bed, but that's where I ended up. So, time went on. And then she beat me again to a point that she had to use her EpiPen that she was allergic to nuts to bring me back to life. And um, I woke up and there was blood on my hands where I must have tried to get a knife off my throat where I was duct taped. She tied me up and kept me hostage for 24 hours on the bed. Like, it was just a nightmare. At this point, I'm like, I need to stop this shit. Like, I need to get out. I need to plan my escape. I've got nowhere to live. She's got my credit card, my bank card. I'm not, I won't be allowed to have oh, pos- possession of my own phone and, and bank card. So what happened after that night then? Um, That night, everything changed for me. Like... I literally started planning my escape. It was all though, like, I didn't care I went to jail at this point. 
I didn't care if I died at this point. Did you not think about going to the police? No, by this time they've been round multiple times. Yeah. So you just given up basically. Yeah, the police weren't gonna help me. Why would they the police have never helped me? They never helped my mum. I've never seen them actually help anyone I know. So I'm just like, fuck the police, I'm gonna do this on my own. And then um I ended up meeting this police officer that was the head of my case. And um I ended up talking to her and she basically said to me, like, if you ever get out, call me. This person isn't who you think they are. And I'm scared for your safety. And I was just like, thank you. She's like, if you need me, just call me and I'll get you out. So at this point, did you not? I think after that, the police turned up and... They dropped me to Wood Green and then they told her where I was and I was hiding in the train station for my uncle to come and get me. Then while I was away from her for five days, I planned, that's it. This is how I'm going to get out. Mm. So I planned it all. I went back there because I needed my ID. Um, I needed, I needed stuff. I couldn't just leave with nothing. So I went back um, yeah I went back got more information I found more paperwork from the other victims um, I ended up bumping into one girl that she took their virginity and the girl probably still believes it today if she ain't seen it in the news like I remember her telling me a story that her sister told her that she was a female and I remember turning around saying to her, I think you need to believe your sister. And she was like, what do you mean? I was like, your sister was telling the truth. And she was like, what? I was like, just know your sister telling the truth. Like, if I don't make it out of here and you see me dead, just know your sister told you the truth. Like, I want you to know that. Like, your sister was not lying. So that's like, that's so in depth. Like, so, you know, where the hell was your head at this point? Like, how did you get out? Like, fast forward a little bit, you know, you know, you're about to die. Like, you know, if you don't get out of this relationship, you're going to die. You've got no support from family. You've got no support from the police. Like, how did you get out? So I ended up talking to my mum and I was telling my mum the situation. And I was like, I'm going to get out. I've got to do this. It's got to happen. That like I've got to get out of this situation for my family and for me. Mm. Um, I ended up sorting out with my mum's friend about me living at her house. So I managed to <laughs> sign the paperwork and get it agreed to. <clears throat> and um, she gave me a gadget phone, like, the Android, the Samsung back then. So I managed to sort it out with her and I managed to convince Hannah that I was going on a visit for the day. And that's why I was packing my bag. And then we started an argument and she like hit me and stuff and I like, grabbed the bag and ran. And then I don't know how, but I, I feel I got to Wood Green and managed to get my mum's friend to order me a cab. And I got to her house. And then I was out, really. And then I ended up staying there. And then Hannah started, like, popping up everywhere in my area. She bit the bottom of my road. She was, like, kicking the door in where I was living. So now I thought, like, I need this to stop. By doubt, I'm mentally ill. I've just been diagnosed with multiple different disorders. They're telling my mum if I don't start eating, I'm going to have to get sectioned because I didn't eat. Um, I didn't sleep. And then I went to, um, I rang 999 and said, like, I'm being harassed. She won't leave me alone. She's threatening to kill me. Like, I need help. I need help and I need someone to, like, help me and then they sent me to Ilford police station to go for an interview 
and um, stuff by unit at Holborn got a phone call and the officer just come back to like go home and they said someone called her and said Zoe it's Roxanne like she's ready to report it and um, she came to me and she just sat there looking at me and was like I honestly thought I was going to see you in a morgue like you're so brave like what have you been through and I told her and then from there, I told her about the other girls that I found paperwork from, like their stories that I knew, and I wanted her to find them so they at least can come forward and like get justice as well. Mm. Obviously, as you know, a lot of people know she did get found guilty. It, it will we'll definitely get to that bit in like once you've, yeah, go on, carry on. Yeah, so. <laughs> She got arrested. She got transferred from. Um, she got arrested at a house in North. Got um, got remanded. So um, so basically, so so she went to prison before you did because obviously you guys have committed this crime, whatever you've done, um, and basically you're both on bail for this crime. But then when you've reported this, finally, like got someone to hear you out then she's been remanded because I guess she's committed another crime whilst on bail and also because of the extent of the crime, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'm just clarifying just some things up that people aren't quite, you know, as as uh, knowledgeable as what we are with how the system works. So, yeah, so what happens from there? So then, so obviously at this point then, TJ or Hannah, whatever, you know, you want to call this person, they've been remanded. So then... Obviously, you've got a bit of peace and quiet at this point. I guess you're getting your head together, getting ready for sentencing. So then you get sentenced. Um, no, at this point, my life's just carrying on. Um, the court case was meant to happen. A month after she got arrested, it got postponed to September. So my life's carrying on, really. I'm being interviewed for this. Obviously, I'm being interviewed for what Hannah did. Uh, my family being interviewed. My sister was underage at the point she would have been interviewed. Um, so really and truly, my life was still with the police. <laughs> Between police and solicitors and barristers, <laughs> I'm trying to live a normal life. Then. Sorry. I don't know if you were talking, but my phone, my phone just lagged then. Sorry. Yeah, so between the time that she got remanded, I'm dealing with police officers, barristers, solicitors. Um... <laughs> But I'm trying to live a normal life in between. Of course. Um, the court case came. Um, it was so is this the court case, sorry, for the guys that you two, for the crime yeah. that you two have committed? Okay. Yeah. So that came, um, you know, it was nearly three weeks long. A lot of shit got brought up. The relationship, what I went through. And everyone was kind of like, oh, your boss case, because, you know, when they heard the story, they could tell there was. Oh, you've um, been manipulated. You've been abused. Yeah. You've been, yeah. like, sucked into this. But um, my 12 jurors turned down to 10. One got kicked off for looking up halal chicken shops. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, for what? I was obviously more worried about their lunch, yeah, go on. Yeah, and the other one, um, childcare issues. And then they tried to stop the case because only two of the jurors out of the ten were actually awake. It was like... (laughs) So they found me guilty straight away of one charge and they were arguing the other two charges. Um, Yeah, I got sentenced to three years at first. Okay, so, can I just, just, some people are probably curious, what were your charges? What did you actually go to prison for? We don't have to go into the story, but just what was it that happened? Um, uh, what was your offence, sorry? So I got done for possession of disguised firearms, supplying noxious substance and going to quit for burglary. Okay. So, yeah, because no one actually got kidnapped, it got dropped. So um, we got a sentence for that. And then, obviously, I didn't get sent to prison until two months afterwards. 
So when I was being sent down, they obviously said like there was going to be cautions put in because not only is she my code D, she's my perpetrator. Um, I got sent in with her. The next day, <laughs> the girl that we know was shouting my name to pass me a letter. Then the next day, I got moved to literally opposite her on the same spur. Because this was really, this was real messed up because you two should have never been in the same prison. And I kind of get that they might not have been in a situation to put you in two different prisons because you either have to go to Peterborough, Eastwood Park or Bronzefield. There's not an option, but you should never have been on the same wing. Um so you land up on in the same wing as her. So how is it? So at this point, do you... Because I remember you got a lot of shit over this, didn't you? You got a lot of stick because people didn't believe you at first. So when you first got in there, obviously you've never been a prisoner before and your bit of home's in there. Now she's built up all these friendship and relationships before you've got in there. So are you scared? Do you just think, oh my God, I, I just want to talk to her even though I've done wrong? Or do you ask to get moved straight away? Like, what happens then? So, when I first get put in, this was in my within my first week of jail. One, I'm trying to work out how jail works. Yeah, of course, of course. So, I'm still Scary. waking up. This is a nightmare. And three, I'm opposite the worst bitch of my life. It's like orange is the new fucking black at this point. <laughs> I beg to differ on that one but yeah go on I know all I can say is it is the most scariest thing ever uh, I don't care what anyone says I like that, I'm literally getting girls come up to me like your TJ's Cody your TJ's Cody so I'm like I've not even had time to even like form my own friendships yeah talk about explaining to everyone that I don't fucking know that this bitch has been in your jail for nearly a year like under a year now, like nine, eight months, that she's had to build up people. That I'm telling the truth. So, but so what happens before this story comes out? So, do you are you on the wing with TJ? Sorry, I'm always going to refer to him or her him as. I'm going to be respectful here because no matter what's happened, they still do want to be a guy. So I'm going to refer to him as TJ. So, do you and TJ still? Um, do you still have like um so sorry, so do you have a friendship or are you like so right, this, okay. I'm hating. But I was like, okay. She sent me a letter going um basically saying that I I want to explain it all to you to why this is what I did. Please will you give me a minute to talk? So I'm thinking, okay this girl's going to come clean and admit everything to me. That's what she basically said in the letter, that she wants to explain it, everything to me and come clean. So, I've got in her room and I'm like, well, she's like, how are you? And I'm like, well, obviously I'm not happy. I don't like you. I can't believe I'm talking to you and I can't believe I'm living opposite you. So, how am I feeling? Not happy at all. Um, but yeah, so I started asking her things like, you know, why did you do what you done? What made you do that? Why didn't you ever come clean? And it was just like, I don't want to talk about it right now. Roxy, don't you understand this is difficult for me? Do you not understand what I've been through? Rah, rah, rah. And I'm like, are you not stopping to the fact of like you need to kill oh, situations? <laughs> Some and, people are so delusional. Yeah, and you've lied to me this whole time, and you've been a bitch. Like, where is the? Where is the understanding of what you put me through? Like, I'm in fucking jail. So, I was what in... happens from that conversation then? Do you two become friends again, no. or no? Okay. So it's still going on the point of like not right now not right now and then her showing me off to everyone and then I remember like these nine girls or how many come up to me and was like is it true that Hannah raped you is it true and I was like uh 
you're Hannah's friends. I'm not about to tell the truth. Yeah. Jumped by 10 bitches. So I was like, no. I don't know what you're talking about. That girl's not me. I don't know what you're talking about. Then it comes to the point of like, it's been four or five days now. And I'm like, Hannah, are you going to tell me why you did what you did? No. I said, you know what? Go and fuck yourself. And I will be telling everyone exactly what you did. Because I've gave you a week now to explain to me why you did what you did. Mm. Like, I'm not scared of you no more. Like, if you bitches are going to jump me, jump me at this point. Like, there's nothing none of you can do to me that's not been done to me. So, because I remember, like, um, obviously, when they got found guilty, and we'll go into that in a minute, but my friend that's still currently inside, do you remember I had the conversation, and she was yeah. like, everyone doubted Roxy, everyone said she was lying, no one believed you, now the truth's come out, like, everyone, you know, everyone's, like, eating their words. Do you think that everyone disbelieved you because you told these girls in the beginning that it wasn't true? Which I'm telling you now, see people on the outside, they could quite easily go, well, you shouldn't have lied. You should have said it's true. No. When you've only been in prison a week, you ain't telling even three girls stood around you that t- that this person probably made friends with that li- literally, you you know, what do you do? You, I understand why you said what you said. Do you know what I mean? Until you're in that predicament, you know, it makes sense, but do you think that's why everybody doubted you? No, because I feel like when it came clean and I had paperwork to prove it came clean, yeah, it was still though like it's my fault. Like, how did you not know? How? Da-da-da. But it was all though like the tables were turning on Hannah. Like, this girl's got paperwork. Like, she wouldn't have paperwork if you didn't do nothing. So how was your sentence for you? So you, you've you got to serve this three-year stretch. Obviously, she's on bail this whole time because she's only not long been sentenced for this, hasn't she? So yeah. how is that? Like, you know, did you get a lot of shit from people for this? You know, did people call you a liar to your face? Did people try think... and step to you about it? No, to be fair, no one ever stepped me about it because no one really liked Hannah. So mm. I was quite lucky with that decision, <laughs> like... A lot of people didn't like Hannah, so or they thought she was a snitch or she was a rat, or yeah, it did no, get to the point. That's I all I heard. In yeah, that regards, that no one stepped to me as to beef me on this subject. Yeah, but did the girls chat shit? Yeah, did a lot of them ever tell me to my face? No. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the same with anything, any scenario. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You have it on a daily basis. They're your best friend to your face. Two minutes later, they're telling someone else something else. Like it doesn't yeah. matter what you do. I think a lot of people that knew me and heard the story and took time to understand it, believe me. Yeah. And I think girls that didn't, didn't. And like I already said the whole time I was in jail, you'll all be watching it on the fucking news. And so you all did. So That's the reason why I'm quizzing you so many questions because you know what it is like, when you meet TJ in prison, obviously, you know she's a female, okay, wanted to, transi- to transition. I keep saying the word wrong. Um, so people kind of like, they just know she's a woman. So straight away, you already know that in your head. So how can you not know? That's the way they look at it. They don't take a step back and go, well, hang on a minute. You know, TJ does look like a guy, you know, um, very flat there and stuff like that. And, you know, if it was the way it was, there was excuses and stuff, you know, that's why it's always get stem deeper and go into the to the story and find out why, you know, you didn't know. And obviously you didn't. So we'll, well, you're always going to get people with their opinions, even after watching this, they're still going to say, you know, it's not true. But so... We'll fast forward now. So so your prison wasn't really affected too much by this afterwards, you know. People didn't give you a hard time through your sentence over TJ or anything like that. I don't think people gave me a half time. It was always chitter chatter. Yeah. Did yeah, I guess it must have got boring after three years. Yeah. But did I really give a shit? No. I'm more concerned at the fact that I have to go and fight this in court. Like, I get out of jail and I've left most dumbass people behind that chatty shit, don't really care. But I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to face worse I'm lagging I'm... again. Are you? Are you back? I mean, 
yeah 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 sorry it's just my i don't know why it keeps disconnecting and connecting to the internet I just, you know this must have been a real tough journey so not only are you doing your sentence why do i keep lagging i think you're lagging now <laughs> no don't do this to me hello yeah Oh, I don't know what happened there. Right. So did this so did this make your I mean oh thank you, Ash. So this must have made your sentence a lot harder then. So not only you're doing your sentence, you've got all this stress on top of it. I mean, I know what it's like to be on bail for a year or two years, never mind being inside doing a sentence and then knowing you've got all this court crap hanging over you as well. You know, did, did do you think it really affected like your family outside, your sentence? I feel like I use prison as like what it would be like to be on a, in the court case with jurors. <laughs> That's the way I kind of looked at it. Yeah. Like I knew I was going to go to court. I already knew what it was like to go to court and fight this already because I got ripped on it. So, of course, yeah, being on trial. And then to do it all again, but to be fighting to be believed by a bunch of people that I don't know. If I heard this, would I be thinking, what the fuck? Yeah. On top of that, I'm trying to come to terms with what's happened to me. Like, I'm doing therapy in prison, and I still don't understand how I got in the situation. I still don't understand how it happened. I still don't understand how I didn't know. How couldn't I know? And I think it literally only got to me last year when I finally feel like I don't give a fuck I know it happened I know what I went through I'm lucky to be here alive I'm lucky to survive and I'm lucky that I've got it out there that women do do just as much nasty things as what men do mm. no we're currently not in jail no the girl is though did they, so when did they get sentenced and how long did they get sentenced to and how many victims come out in the end that she, or he, sorry, had done this to? So there was only three of us in the court case. There was five or six, but only f us three got took to the court case. She got 13 and a half years. So three victims, one of them being you, yeah? Yeah, and another yeah. one was 16 at the time that it happened. So she was a minor. Not that it makes any difference of age anyway, but well. No. But... You know I mean. So yeah, sorry, carry on. She got how long? 30 and a half yeah. years. I think she got found guilty. I can't remember how many charges, but I think there was like 13 alone of just mine. Wow. Um, She got 30 and a half years. Um. Some of them were like multiple counts, but the jurors couldn't come to terms with it. And I think it just got to the point of like, it wouldn't have made no difference if she did get found guilty for two extra. She got found guilty for all the ones that mattered. Yeah, of course, of course. And um, it wasn't like they got a light sentence either. So guys, um, what's your um, TikTok page? What's your TikTok page, Roxy? Is it 1998 or something? Oh, my God. Something like that, yeah. Okay, what I'll do, guys, if you check out Roxy, um, I'm sure it's 1990. What's your year of birth? Is it Roxy 1991? No, I apologise. Right, sorry, scrap that. Okay, so check out Roxy's TikTok page. It's Roxy 1991. On there, you will see evidence of this. So you was actually approached by some form of media, wasn't you, afterwards? Because I know that um, the story was in the news. You know, this is not a made-up story, guys. You've done... A... I was approached by one magazine, and um, I think it was the Sunday Mirror yeah. as well. I got approached for it. Um, so, yeah, it is out there um, to be read. And, yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot that happened, but... 
um, yeah, they kind of shortened it into a short story. Yeah, of course. Uh, what advice would you give to anyone out there that is in these circumstances, you know, whether it's male or female, you know, like literally what, you know, to the whole the, the abusive, the, the violent relationship or or the suspicions of their part not being the sexuality, the what they are, what would you say? Like if you could turn back time and give yourself, your younger self some advice, like what would you say? I think I would say like you're stronger than you ever know. And the fear of leaving is worse than leaving. So like get out like get out try and get some help even if you know if it's called crisis lines the women's refuge or you know what the most amazing team to me that tried to get me help was royal london hospital tried their hardest and the east london rape crisis team were absolutely my safe haven like safe haven and I would say, like, get out. There is teams out there. And, you know, yeah, the police might be failing you. And, yeah, the police might not be helping you. But there's other people out there that will help you get out Just, of the situation. With the police, would you tell them to give up even if they keep knocking you back? Would you, would you honestly say now? Do you feel like, listen, you should never have to try hard with the police. They should take your first call serious as the next as the next but would you say you could have tried harder do you think you could have gone to try to speak to a sergeant do you think that you could have done more like you know what i don't what i'm trying to say is i'm not saying you didn't do enough they should have heard you the first time out but you know when people don't know what to do and, and they've tried the police you know do you, do you think they should keep trying or just go down these other routes i think don't give up on the police altogether because there is police officers that do their job properly i'd say my main thing is try and get with that police officer alone i was never left alone with the police so and when i was it was just chaos but i would definitely say try and get a one-on-one -on -one with a police officer or try and cause the scene to the point that maybe you do get yourself arrested just so you can get to a woman officer or another officer that will listen yeah. to you guys but I would never say give up because your life is worth so much more than what you're than what's going on right now. There is a way out and don't end up thinking that you know you can't because at the end of the day, any man or woman that's been abused right now, you're survivors. We're the most strongest people in this world. Like we can come above anything and anything. So I write the police might not believe you, but find someone that will and get out. Because the last thing I want is, and the main reason why I did go to court and do everything I did was because I never wanted a female to die at her hands. Mm. And also, I don't want women to end up in jail because you've had to kill your perpetrator. And then your life's gone. And Yeah, we've seen so many of that, yeah. haven't we? How many women are inside for yeah. killing so their partners? Fucking rest in peace, Max. Like, come on. Yeah. You know, her partner used to abuse her. My oh, dear friend, Max. I... Yeah, she ended up passing away, still serving her prison sentence. You know, one day she defended herself. She snapped, but she's doing an 18-year sentence because of being abused. So, yeah, like, I love what you're saying. And there's so much truth in it. We've seen so many lives wasted first hand where they've just literally been beaten 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 um you know you've all seen sally is it was it sally jones was we in prison with sally, yeah was it like, sally i can't remember the surname she was like well big over I, the tv lovely day. lady lovely lady yeah, i saw her the day she was going to Brunsfield. in fact i actually came to send with her yeah and when i met her her story alone inspired me like Everyone says to me, like, you should so go and fight it and, and get justice and get your years back and and go to court and fight against your convictions and and win. For some reason, they never found her guilty of commercial control, but I think it's because it's still such a new charge and it's very hard for people to understand. But I think what people have to understand, no matter if you're in an abusive relationship with a female, a male, you know, 
whatever that person it makes no difference what sex they are yeah. you know abuse is abuse or what they, they are get help and stop it like get out of there like just yeah just get your life out that's one thing i'll say like get out of that situation and i think that's my biggest thing a i'm telling my story because a i want other people to know they can get out and it is safe to get out too because i don't want anyone to ever feel ashamed of being raped by a male female whatever that person believes they are and three because i think convictions and the police need to do a lot more to support victims that go through these horrible charges yeah yeah like, no, i understand totally oh mate i think you're such a strong strong person i really appreciate you coming on here and telling your story you know i've got love for you love um you. you know i really really do appreciate it Guys, I will be uploading this in the next couple of days on my YouTube channel. So if you have missed any of this on here, you will be able to catch up with it on there. But no, you've been amazing. And it's so great just to just to hear like the strength in you. You know, you've had a real crap journey, like we've already relayed the fact that you've been, you know, you've been through this ordeal. And then you do your, your first ever prison sentence. Then you've got to wait for, you know, the sentencing and all this court case to be done with but you know a 13 and a half years is you must be pretty satisfied with that so yeah i'm you know i'm so glad that we even got over 10 yeah like everyone says it... Sorry, I don't get over 10 she'll get life and like the judge said if he could give her life without parole he would. And uh-huh. like the only thing that stopped him was because of the law system. Yeah, there's guidelines at the end of the day. To Not- be fair, if you would have said they got four years, it wouldn't have shocked me of how corrupt the system is because you have paedophiles and all that sort of stuff. They get a lesser sentence than what I got for selling drugs. <laughs> you know, so it, it wouldn't surprise me if they was walking out of a two year sentence. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. When you say 13 and a half years, you must be chuffed with that. People have to understand is when people are like, it's not rape, it is rape. And, you know, there was a girl that got found guilty of it, I think two years before Hannah went down and got hardly nothing. And I'm so sorry to the girl's victim, like, so sorry that she did get less. But, you know, I think what the justice system have to realise and the law system is times have changed. It's not just m- women being raped by men or men being raped by men. Women do it too. I know people yeah. don't about it and, and it's taboo. And you know what? There are some amazing people out there that are transgender and are s- honest about their transgender. Yeah, that's what I mean, yeah. And, uh, uh, like, identity... But there's also transgenders out there that will lie and lie to their people. And, you know, there's men in jail right now for killing a transgender that they thought it was a female they laid down with and later on found it was a man. And I think what people have to understand is we're in an era where that does happen now. And I feel like the law needs to come to terms with it's just as much rape as anything else. And give these people sentences that are higher so at least they can get the help to stop doing this not giving them a little four because you can't bother to look after him in jail yeah you know thank god you know downview has got a transgender wing now to protect us women that are in jail from these predators just as much as the women on road yeah no of course because we had jess that was in the prison you know in bronzefield there was a guy that was in prison for raping women for raping women but pretended he wanted to be a woman so he could come into the woman's prison so that that you know what we're going into another whole sort of yeah. different old story now so i am just going to cut it there guys again just f- uh, check out roxy's um tiktok channel you know give her a follow and stuff and have a little look and if you've got any questions if anybody's feeling a type of way you know they want any support if i'm sure roxy would be more than happy to help you guys out so thank you again roxy for coming on i really really appreciate oh. it Roxy 1991. I don't know if it's two X's, but um, <laughs> all fans followers. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Or we'll post something, but yeah. yeah we'll, we'll pop something up anyway. 